It's really, really difficult, um, and it's part of our work to, to try and, and talk about it and, and try and see if, uh, if, when they are ready that they have the tools to go public because that's the only way you have, you have to criticize what's going on, what's wrong about the system that isolates a person, that criminalizes a person, the racism in Europe, which for me is the basic problem, absolutely the basic problem, because if you don't tackle the, the racism, then it's, uh, the, the rest is superficial, because the person can be, have all the qualities, can be, I've, I've met so many engineers, doctors, but if the person, I don't know, you, you can tell me if you agree with that, but if the person don't have the right color, which is not very white, and I mean, in Germany, a blonde is even better if a blonde and blue eyes. So it's uh, there's hardly any chances. Racism is the the biggest disgrace. Yeah. And um, you have screened the film a lot of time, as I heard. So what are the reactions, the reactions from the public audience, but also the reactions by the refugees themselves? Okay. Yeah, since the film was uh, ready, I think I've traveled to more than, I don't know, f around 40 different cities in Germany and, and also to other countries through, uh, to France, Austria, yeah, some. Um, it really, um, varies from city to city, from cities uh, that have a little bit of contact with migrants to cities that doesn't have any contact. And um, the refugees themselves also varies. It depends on, on in which stage of the asylum procedure they are, because I understand that for some people that have just arrived, to, to get a house and to get some benefits in Germany looks uh, attractive, so people don't see the size of the problem. It's more likely that a person that has been waiting for an answer uh, about their asylum procedure for more than two, three years, that they start really realizing what these people are talking about. Because in the beginning, it's, it's not so uh, scary uh, it seems that you are somehow being supported, that, that maybe you have a chance. But actually, in Germany, it's 1% of the people who apply, who are granted asylum according to the paragraph 16a from the Constitution. And so the chances are minimal. I mean, in all these years I've been now, since the year three, five years, uh, Working with it, I met, I don't know, I met many, many, many refugees and in the house, as I say, where I work, there are 300. I met only two people that in this period were, that were granted asylum. Do you know maybe the statistics? I think 2013, it was the um, applicants for asylum in general, I think it was 100,000. Uh, applications. The results of uh, who was granted asylum according to the 16A paragraph or to the protection of refugees, I think from 2000, it's, they only have from 2011. Mm -hmm. I think it's this, the 1.1 percent, and then um, I think 8 percent or a little, a little bit more under this protection, which is not actually Asylum, the person is not recognized as a refugee. It's minimum. Uh, in, in where I work in this house, most, I mean, everybody had already their, um, their, what is Antrage, uh, request denied. So they're all up, um, um, trying again. Yeah. And of course, there are many people on deportation as well. Yeah, no, uh, um, with the guarantees of the Refugee Convention, uh, the, the, the 1951 Convention and um, the, 
the, the, the, the lawful things uh, that are available to refugees. In this house where I work, no one has any chance. Apart from resisting, of course they have a chance. And I think we have been building this chance because we are in the middle of the society, not isolated in these houses. So we are constantly, constantly in the media, in the public eye. We have support from the neighbors uh, uh, around the school. And this, I think, uh, uh, is the only way to try and make a difference. Yeah. And what kind of activities are provided there in this house? Everything like we have from uh, legal support, we have a team of lawyers that come three times a week for the whole house. For the women's space, we have a team of women lawyers uh, only for them. We have German classes, of course. We have psychological support, um, psychologists for the women. We guarantee that access. We have also doctors that come every Saturday for the whole school, mm -hmm. a team of doctors. Um, we have food supply also that come every Saturday also. Um, and then we have lots of projects that approach and offer uh, all sorts of activities from theater to music. And, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Branko, um, we saw the situation in Germany, the conditions in which asylum seekers live. Also we heard now what is going on in this hall uh, with asylum seekers. So. Um, could you tell us uh, about the Croatian situation? And can you compare um, these two systems? Hello to everybody first. You hear me? Good? Okay. I'm working in center. Maybe I don't need a microphone. <laughs> I can yell. <clears throat> first of all, I, I don't know how to compare these two systems because I don't know anything about German system just from this documentary maybe what I heard from my colleagues in Germany. First time working in Croatian Red Cross, I'm not working in <coughs> ministry. I don't know many about laws. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not theory man. I'm working only in practice, only with asylum seekers and people who get some kind of protection, of course. Uh, I think that Croatian system is better. We grow at always think that we are better. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe because <clears throat> we don't have so many people in Croatia. Mm -hmm. I think in Germany have many asylum seekers and maybe because of that they have big problems. I really don't know. <clears throat> what can I say? I think that our system is not, now is better than before. And uh, Celestin will tell you much more about that because I'm working there, I can be objective about it. But I think that we, we are working very well now. From I'm working at uh, Recreation Red Cross, we work every day with asylum seekers and they, they, they are very good. We don't have any problems. Now we have most people from Nigeria and Arab countries and we don't have too many problems. I don't know about percents people get asylum. I think it's much higher now when we are in Europe Union than before. But I think that's the best thing that Celestine can tell you. And I'm so sorry that we are speaking on English because we learned Celestine and my <laughs> colleagues and we are from Red Cross very well Croat Croatian. I'm sorry that he must speak on English now. <laughs> uh, Celestine, can I ask yeah, him? Yes. Or if you want to ask him. No, it's what you can tell good and bad things from this system, actually work, working organization in uh, center, and also what you see, uh, what, how Croatian are to asylum seekers in Zagreb or every other city where you've been till now. Tell something about you, how, how long you are here. Okay, I'm Celeste from Nigeria. Yeah, for one year and six months. Uh, one year. I'm here for one year and six months. <coughs> so, uh, from the documentary I watched, 
right now, I don't know, I felt a little bit down because uh, I would not say that I'm a, I was expecting that from Germany because I, I thought they are the leading country in the European Union. So if the German could be that way, I don't know what we expect from the Croatians because Croatia has a lot to learn from Germany, do I understand? But every country, what I understand, has their own system. And uh, I must say that when I came to this country, I felt welcome. I was a guy who was always afraid of police. But coming to this country, I don't know how I managed to be lucky. I think the police was nice to me, and that really gave me some confidence. They have really invited me to play football with them. I have most of them as my friend as we, not for anything but just for football the reason. And uh, the asylum system, the side I can say that is very bad is for those who are good people who try to, uh, who came here for their reasons. But uh, in some places there are some things like uh, people who stay and those things bring badness to the asylum people. And the good ones are the ones who are hurt mostly in this. But the ignorance of the side of it, if I will explain, is uh, I'm here one year and six months. I haven't caught in the camp that I'm not saying that black people are good, <coughs> all of them, but I haven't caught or heard from the security that a black man went to the city and stayed in Croatia since I'm here. But I don't want to mention country's name for security reason. And the people who actually stay, in the camp, at the police know them. Even the police come, they don't check the black people mostly. And the police know these people. And these people, why they stay is because they have some similar color with the white people. So, and the white people have confidence with them when they are run. But that ignorance is that when the black man came, they, they fed the black man is the asylum seeker, but the, this guy who has the same white color, maybe not asylum, maybe he's a white guy, or maybe he's from France, and then they have the opportunity to steal from the people because the people have confidence in them. So that is the ignorant part of it when it comes for asylum. Uh, I think that has to do, I don't know how that will be done to help the people to understand or uh, put it in a way that uh, 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 people will not see only the black people as asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. Because we have uh, people from Kosovo, we have people from Asia, we have people from Morocco, we have people from uh, all over the world, Russia, in this camp here. So, but the camp is always like it's the black people who are asylum seeker, and that's really sad. And, uh, and the big, uh, when they say somebody stay, it seems that the black people stay because, uh, but we haven't caught them, the police haven't caught one, you know. So it's really sad that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And uh, can you share your uh, experience um, living in the uh, Asylum Seekers Center? How was there? And also in Croatia, um, there is now this um, residential restriction. So this is a big difference as we saw in the movie. So can you share with us your experience living in the center or the center? Well, at the beginning when we came, it was 24 hours going out, nobody, no restriction. You can go whenever you want, come back whenever you want. And I must be honest, the Croatian citizen, not because I'm saying this, uh, the people of asylum, everyone you has always talk about Croatian citizen, the way they are really open people. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, because these people, some of them are coming from Greece, they know a lot of how the other places are and how the Croatians have sent them. But things begin to change at the middle. When the stealing came, the people were like a little bit cautious. But this doesn't mean that the people don't accept. Uh, they are not open and loving people. You can see that the Croatian love foreigners. So, so uh, uh, but 